it's so fascinating. I mean, I, you know, there's this big story about Swiss banking in rogues. And then more recently, I wrote a piece for The New Yorker about the Russian oligarchs in London and the, the kind of sophistication of the whole industry of financial dissimulation, basically, whether it's uh, you know, tax avoidance or the way in which things are, are, are structured such that nobody can put their hands on the money is really interesting. And it is sort of a theme that keeps coming up in my work, because in the case of the Sacklers, um, you know, prior to Purdue Pharma declaring bankruptcy, the Sacklers had taken $10 billion out of the company. And there's all kinds of interesting court papers where they basically acknowledge that that money is it's kind of beyond our reach at this point. We don't know where it is. We don't even know how to find it. Um, and it would be very difficult to develop an accurate picture of how much money there is and and where it's hiding. And in the Swiss bank story that I have, which is actually about a guy who worked at HSBC in Geneva who stole a huge amount of private client data and started sharing it with governments in Europe and saying, hey, look, here's all the info on the wealthy people in France or Spain or Greece who've been hiding their money in Switzerland and not paying taxes. You get these crazy stories in that about the way in which um, you'd have these Swiss bankers come to places like New York City or Miami, and there was never any mail, uh, never any paper trail. They would meet in person with their clients. They'd sit on park benches. They wouldn't do phone calls. I mean, the level of sneakiness around very wealthy American clients hiding their money abroad is, is kind of staggering.